So you may have noticed that when you start Visual Studio 2013 and select File New Project and go to MVC, you get something called Bootstrap. But what is Bootstrap? Bootstrap is an excellent platform for developers to develop something that looks good and designers will love. But what does Bootstrap actually do? Some of the key benefits of Bootstrap are the grid system, which lets you align all of your content quite nicely and would put it in a way that a designer would use. So you get good padding, you get good margins, and everything will flow a lot nicer and be uh, much more symmetrical. Um, you get responsive out of the box. So when the screen size is bigger or smaller, you get um, elements resizing themselves and shifting around the page to um, flow better and to sort of respond to that screen size. You also get really good looking forms. Now forms by default are not that nice looking uh, and what Bootstrap does is it lets you put labels and, and form elements and have everything sort of uh, look nice and symmetrical and correctly sized. You'll see this thing called theming using Bootstrap. Now what does that entail? Where are those files? If you jump into the Solution Explorer, check out content, you'll see two new files bootstrap.css and bootstrap.min.css. Now you'll also see if you go to the scripts folder, bootstrap.js and bootstrap.min.js. It's these files that make up Bootstrap, but then how are they actually included in the project? If you go to the app start folder and then the bundle config.cs, you'll notice several bundles, two of which include Bootstrap. You've got the bootstrap.js bundle, and you've got the bootstrap.css bundle. So if you haven't used bundles before, you can now reference your files in the bundle here. And when you go to your layout, which we'll just go to now, that's views, shared, layout, you'll notice these two lines of code up here. Now this is styles.render, which shows, which renders out our CSS bundles and scripts.render, which renders out the JavaScript. So flicking back to bundle.config, you can see that this path here is right here at the bottom. And this path here, content.css, is at the top. So now let's take a look at bundles and how Bootstrap is actually put onto your form. Let's fire up the project and see how it looks. OK, so what we've got is something that looks quite similar to all the other ASP.NET pages of the past, but with a little bit of a twist. What we've got is a nice looking navigation bar at the top. We've got a nice big view, sort of a standout at the top here as well. And we've got columns. Now what's interesting about this is it all is done using the grid system. Now the grid system is made up of 12 segments. It starts at the left here and goes to the right here. Now all the content in between these two places is called the container. The 12 segments help us split up content. You notice that we've got three sections of four segments each, from here to here, here to here, and here to here. Now knowing that we've got 12 segments, we can then make up any number of designs. I'll just flick open our index page. Looking at the code, you can see Jumbotron, you can see rows, and you can see columns. Now these columns represent the segments I was just talking about. You can see that we've got col, md, for, and we've got it three times. This is this section right here. Now when I mention containers, which go from left to right, you can also segment your, your content from top to bottom. Each one of these is called a row. Now if we want to change up the design and have maybe two thirds on the left and one third on the right, we can do that. Let's just ditch this div and change that to eight. A quick refresh, and you'll see we've now got a two-thirds column and a one-third column. Now the next thing about Bootstrap that's really powerful is the way it responds to screen size, called the responsive design. You'll notice if we start to change the size of the window, 
the content adjusts itself to suit. Now you can go all the way from large, medium, small, and extra small for phones. You'll also notice this fancy nav bar at the top here. See how your menu turns into a neat little one touch open. So not only can the content resize itself based on uh, what the screen size is, you can also tell it how to resize really simply just by adding classes. So for example, if you wanted to take a large piece of content with two columns and keep it with two columns all the way down to phone size, you can do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this column to six and we're going to change our other column to six and that's going to give us two equal columns, remembering that we need to make up enough numbers to equal 12 segments. Let's take a look and see how this looks. Alright, great. But you'll notice that when we respond, our columns disappear and they go all the way down. What we want is two columns no matter what screen size. So what you can do is you can say, hey Bootstrap, I want the extra small to be 6 as well, rather than doing what you're doing. Just a couple of classes, we'll refresh, and you notice as we get smaller and smaller and smaller, we keep our two columns. So the grid system is great, and all you need are classes with no CSS knowledge and barely any HTML knowledge to use. But what about forms? Forms are the thing that most developers struggle with. And uh, what Bootstrap does is it makes it really simple to get any sort of form design you like, um, be it labels on the left, text boxes on the right, or up and down, anything you want. Um, let's check out a couple examples of, of some good forms. So when starting a form, it's a good idea to have a view model uh, handy, or a model at least. Um, and what this will let you do is scaffold uh, an edit form or a create form for you. Um, that's one of the new features of MVC5 as well because um, it automatically puts in all the bootstrap classes as well. So what I'm going to do is create a model and I'm going to create an edit uh, page from that model. So first of all, let's create a new class. And let's call this the developer model. Now this developer, we'll give him a name. And let's give him, say, an awesome rating out of five. What we can then do is come up to our views. Actually, what we'll do is we'll start with a controller. Let's go to controllers. Now you can add one with read and write actions. We'll call it the developer controller. And what we want is an edit view. Now with this template drop down, you can select all sorts of different templates that'll pre-scaffold the page for you. We'll select our developer model, and we'll hit add. Now, whoa, what's all this code? OK, for starters, we've got the familiar using HTML.begin form. But what you'll also notice are things like this, a div with class form horizontal, div with class form group, these columns that we saw earlier, and things like button and button default. Now these are all bootstrap classes and you'll find them pretty much everywhere and a lot of these um, new MVC uh, scaffolding bits put these classes in for you to make your life easier. So let's check out how that looks without touching it at all. We'll flick back to our website, go to developer, edit, and we'll throw in an ID. Hey, that looks pretty good. Now what's going on here? We've got full name, and we've got awesome. It's done everything for us. Even a neat little save button. But I'm going to say, hey, that's a little bit small. Maybe we could do better. 
So what I'm going to do is add something called control, uh, sorry, form control to these text boxes. Let's check out the result of adding form control class to our text box. Hey, much better. Look at that. We've got some nice styling, some cool blue hover over. And to top it off, we get to control the size of the text box based on the form element it's in. OK, so you notice what I've done is added this form control class to our text box. I've also changed it from editor 4 to text box 4 to make this sort of stuff easier. But I've noticed something that Visual, uh, that Visual Studio is putting in that is breaking the way Bootstrap works. This text box is in a column with size 10. And if we go to the Chrome editor here, you can see the width right, right there. Now you can see the label is col md2. And the text box should be col md10, filling up that whole space. But it's not. So what Visual Studio has done in its site.css is put this max width thing in here. And they've even commented on why. <laughs> I'm going I'm to uncom I'm going to comment this out, sorry. And we can see what Bootstrap's intended behavior was. Now you'll see that because this label has col md2, it's two segments wide. And because this form control has um, col md10, it's 10 segments wide. Now that's the intended behavior. What we're going to do now is a little trick um, with the grid system called offsetting to make everything look nice. So we'll go back to our um, edit page. All right, so we've got 2 and 10. But what you can also do is use offset to make up your 12. Now what we'll do is we'll put in here col medium offset. And we'll put in 3. Now this will skip 3 segments and then add in the label for 2 segments. So that's 5. And what we want to do is put in, let's say, well let's just see how that looks. No, I broke it. <laughs> of course. OK, so we've got col md2 and col offset 3. Now what this does is it skips three segments and renders it at two segments wide. So that's 5, which means we need to make up to 12. So what we'll do is we'll add col md7 to our text box. And you can see, hey, that label's moved all the way over. But our text box is still huge. Let's make that smaller. Now you can cheat here and just put 4, and it'll add an offset to the other side. There we go. That's nicely centered. Let's pull it back over a couple. There, much better. And let's do the same for the awesome dropdown, or for the awesome text box. First of all, we'll change editor 4 to text box 4. Next, we'll add this class. Form control. We'll change the label to have a col md offset of 1. And we'll change our text box to be four wide. Brilliant. Look at that. Hey, now our save button's out of alignment. Let's go fix that up too. You can see the offset already in effect here. But what we'll do is we'll move that over to three. And there it is. 
So that's a couple of the cool things you can get from Bootstrap straight away. But what you need to do is go to getbootstrap.com to see out all the other cool things you can get. Fancy navigation bar, buttons, button groups and dropdowns, tables, striped tables, responsive tables, icons, labels, badges, alerts, progress bars, modals, tabs, tooltips, popovers, and even a carousel. So that's Twitter Bootstrap. I hope you liked it. I use it everywhere and you should too. It's just great for getting developers to that next level and making everything look good straight off the bat. If you'd like to see more on ASP.NET MVC, you can check it out at SSW TV by clicking this button. Cheers. Did you get all that? We'll take the SSW TV quiz and test your knowledge now.